Ma'am Alfie or Sir Alfie. Good afternoon din po, Sir Manuel. Good afternoon din po, Ma'am Cheryl Castro. Good afternoon. Good afternoon po. Let's keep ourselves healthy po ha, everyone. Welcome again on the third part of our a fourth part rather of our web conference sponsored by Pies I21. Good afternoon to all from Ma'am Elizabeth Castro. Good afternoon po Jan Ma'am Elizabeth. Also from Sir or Ma'am Ben Prospero. Prosperoso. Good afternoon everyone from Pilska Pilam Villamor Pasay City. Proud Ilonga. God bless. Yes Ma'am, basta Ilonga guapa. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Again po, please follow our basic or netiquette for us to have a smooth um, smooth event po this afternoon. We have done to, to the three, four topics and now we still need, we still have two topics, one for this afternoon and one for tomorrow. So again, I am your host. I am Mr. Charles Episulan, and I'm welcoming you again to the PIS I-21 National War Conference for the 21st Century Researchers and Educators with the theme, Digitalization in Research and Education, Leveraging the Emerging Trends in Data Management. So it seems that our guest speaker this afternoon is here already. Um, so... I will introduce him again. So allow me to introduce our guest speaker. Our guest speaker this afternoon is presently the designated university director for knowledge and technology management of the research, development, and extension of Gagayan State University, Tuligarao City, since 2018, and concurrently the campus research coordinator of Gagayan State University at Lasam. He is occupying the faculty rank of assistant professor for. He started charting his career as a private elementary school teacher at San Lorenzo Ruiz Educational Institute, private school head at Lazam Academy Incorporated, faculty of School of Education, Arts and Sciences of the University of St. Louis Tugigarao, to a faculty and administrator of Cagayan State University. He also obtained his PhD in Educational Management at the age of 23 in 2013, Master of Arts in Education, Major in Educational Management in 2011, a BA Generalist in 2010, and finished academic subjects for BS Ed English in 2013. He has published 29 research articles indexed in Scopus. Clarivate Analytics, and ASEAN Citation Index, or ACI Journals. He has an H index of 6 and I10 index of 3. He has presented researches in various international, national, and regional research conferences and symposia and was awarded Best Research Presenter and Best Research Paper Awardee. He was awarded also as Distinguished Faculty Researcher of Social Science Category of Cagayan State University. He presently serves as editor and reviewer of various SSCI Web of Science Index, Index and Scopus Elsheber journals such as International Journal of Learning, Teaching, and Educational Research. Also, the, Sa the Sage Open Article Editor or a Reviewer. She has also the Journal of Technology and Science Education, also the Studies of Applied Economics, Eurasian Journal of Educational Research, Journal of Social Studies Education Research, and last is the Asia-Pacific Journal of Multidisciplinary Research. He is also the co-author of five books, namely Research Methodology, Quantitative and Qualitative, a Practical Guide for Researchers from Gaps, Identification to Publication. He, has also, he was also the co-author of How to Conduct Action Research in Education, also the Teacher in Communication School Culture 
and organizational leadership. Another book is the How to Write and Publish Your Thesis, and the last is How to Write and Publish Your Dissertation. Our guest speaker this afternoon is also engaged in externally and institutionally funded research projects of the Agayan State University in collaboration with the government's different agencies such as the Department of Science and Technology and the Department of Agriculture. He is an associate member of the National Research Council of the Philippines under Division I and was conferred as a fellow of the Royal Institute of Educators. Once again, I am referring to Mr. Gilbert C. Magulud, Jr., PhD, LPT, FRIDR on the topic, Trends, Pathways, and Strategies in Research Journal article publication in Web of Science and Scopus Journals. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. This is again. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Audible ba ako? Yes, po. Okay. Okay. I would like to acknowledge our participants today. Of course, I have with me here, uh, watching through live in YouTube, my students in research and education and language research from Gagayan State University. Okay, and of course, our participants coming from the different regions of the country. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. All right. So this is my, as we sum together, all we have learned from the previous uh, uh, resource speakers. No, Here I am again for these trends and pathways and strategies in research journal article publication in Web of Science and Scopus journals. Yesterday, I talked about the ways, the means, and strategies on how we can translate our research results into action and practice. And we talk about the six P's. So the number one P there is publication, which is actually the focus of my topic for this afternoon. Let me begin with these learning outcomes for this afternoon that I'm expecting that our participants here will be able to package their research outputs for science, Web of Science or WAS and for Scopus publications. Second one is to update you with the trends, the pathways and technology tools for journal article preparation, as well as journal article packaging. And if there, if uh, time warrants us to do this, then we will be able to have a sample of uh, this last outcome to submit journal articles to Web of Science and Scopus Index journals. So much has been said about research, but let me again present the situation. When we talk of scientific journals, these are the essential media for disseminating our scientific results, our scientific investigations. So as we try to tell to the world that this is the finding of your research, these are actually the truthful scientific findings and the, these journals where you will be publishing your research will be coined as the lifeblood of living and evolving science. It's a living science and it's also an evolving science because knowledge is dynamic. And as we go through the process every day, new inventions, new technologies are developed. So writing and publishing your scientific articles is actually a way for those listening professors, listening instructors and teachers here for you to develop your career as a scientist or to achieve or attain or obtain your professorial ranking. And the publication forms now the basis of, your new, of new research as well as the practical application of the findings and results. So one of the six P's as publication and our focus this afternoon is on publication. So telling to the scientific community and the society at large about your findings and hoping that they will read it 
they will use it, they will cite it so that you can achieve really the cycle of becoming a researcher or an international researcher. So the thing here is you cannot become an international researcher when few, a few people have cited you and those who cited you come from your university, come from your own country. So establishing your reputation here is very important when we talk of research publication. And what is lamenting again is that aside from the researches that are not really utilized, they are also termed again as a file drawer problem because they were not published. They were not able to reach the target audience in which this target audience will also benefit from the results of your research. So research journal publication is one of the ways for research dissemination as well as research generation. Okay, so why do we publish? We are always informed this, we publish because we want the truth and the truth and nothing but the truth. And when your paper is subjected to a publication, your paper passes through a scientific peer review. And scientific peer reviewing is a matter of those scientific experts. For example, if your paper is on education, in language education, in research, then you will be able to submit your research and that paper will be reviewed. And those people who will review are the people who are experts in the field. And they offer feedback, they offer recommendation on how to improve your paper. Okay, it allows the dissemination of novel ideas and most of all, rebuttal of existing concepts. And it is a form of communication, a scientific communication. Hoping that we are appreciating now the role of publication because we want that our works will be read by people, by scientists, by experts. And once your paper passed through the scientific peer review process and it came back with all of these recommendations, you need to be very thankful because your paper has something to do when revised, when improved, when enhanced, has something to do to the scientific community. Okay, so what does it, what does it mean to be invited as a peer reviewer? So to become a peer reviewer, your only role there is to review the paper. Your identity will not be known by the, by the one who submitted the paper. And you are uh, being selected as a peer reviewer because it's a way for you to understand that your role, you have that kind of role known by your reputation that you are an expert in that field. So to become a peer reviewer is also a prestige and it will allow you to have access larger breadth of scientific literature because when they will invite you as a peer reviewer to review a specific paper, they will also give you uh, in the form of incentive, they will give you discount, they will give you uh, free access to their scientific databases or library. Okay, so Let's try to look at this one. What are the reasons why journals are rejected? Why research journals are rejected? Plus, on the research design, manuscript, organization, results, and discussion, and conclusion are the primary reasons. In the study by Eziela and his associates in 2013, they studied the common errors of manuscripts submitted, submitted to medical science journals. And based on their content analysis, the papers they have reviewed were not actually accepted in these reputable journals because they found crucial flaws in every section of the manuscript, particularly in introduction, okay, in the results and discussion, even in the methods, and even in the other areas even in referencing section. So the errors are manifold and various. So as we subject ourselves today to this kind of experience, we hope that at the end of the session, all of these learnings you can get will be 
or down to your research papers so that somehow no they will be revised according to our standards here uh, on uh, on my side i'm just only sharing my experience being a peer reviewer at the same time an uh, editor uh, journal editor of Web of Science in Scopus journals. So when we talk of Web of Science in Scopus, these are the two major powerful databases in the world where in outputs, when your papers or research articles are published in these two databases, meaning to say you contributed something for the development of the country, as well as putting our country in the Global Innovation Index. Okay, so what makes a high quality article what makes a high quality journal article first when we talk of high quality journal article we also look at the journal itself we also look at the journal so kung sinasabing you have published in this kind of research or you publish this kind of research the thing here is what journal uh your research was published so you look at the quality now of the journal. Kasi naglipa na ngayon ang mga predatory journals. No? So first, see to it that equality should be trusted and respected by the community it serves. Like the journal that is being the basis now for countries to implement policies in COVID-19 restrictions. No? The, journal, the Nature Journal, the most prestigious journal in the world were in... Uh, Hardcore scientists were able to publish in this kind of journal and the government, no, different governments of the countries were able to adapt their recommendations and be formed as a policy. And they are organized. They run to a high editorial and peer review standards. No, the members of the journal, the one who are reviewing the papers are really the experts in the field out there. Then an emphasis on the quality and trustworthiness of the content, the transparency of the process to the authors and to the readers, the evidence of utility to its community through citation. For us teachers, for us professors, to be cited means a lot for us. Lalong lalong na tayong taga state universities and colleges or private HEIs because our universities are giving incentives for our papers that has been cited, that have been cited by articles indexed by Scopus or Web of Science. And a trusted and respected publisher adhering to publication ethics and standards. And most of all, if the journal is vetted by Scopus and Thomson Reuters, the journal is quality. The journal has something to do for the contribution of knowledge and for the contribution of the development of the society or the community. All right. Now, there are reasons why we publish. These are actually the reasons. No? First, the indicator of our scholarly contribution, particularly when we are teaching in the university, particularly when we are teachers, we are practitioner, practitioners in our field of specialization. What have we contributed to that existing body of knowledge in our field? An indicator of our scholarly contribution. Second, when you submit a research proposal and later on, you have this track record in research. You have this track record in research article publication in Scopus and Web of Science. It becomes a criterion for that funding agency to provide you funding for your research proposal and a way to develop your reputation. And of course, it's our scientific obligation as particularly for us as government employees, you know, as teachers of the Philippine state. So what can we do? What can we do to contribute something for the development of the country? Okay, so publication is just one of the six P's as postulated by the Department of Science and Technology. So now the thing here is, how do we publish? Of course, when we are a published researcher, our career progression is guaranteed. No? 
time warrants, if time warrants, if God warrants, no, we will be able to achieve the highest, the pinnacle of our career. Some of you are, are professors here right now. Some of you already uh, having these high positions and ranks in the academe. And we can only achieve this through publication as well as utilization of our research. Okay, moving on. Now, the question is, when we publish the Web of Science and its focus, what to publish and what not to publish? These are the questions. So for what to publish, see to it that you have conducted the research and you have a new and original results of the research or even methods. Reviews or summaries of a particular subject is publishable. Manuscript that advances the knowledge and understanding of certain field is publishable. And what not to publish are, of course, the reports of no scientific interest, out of date work when you have conducted a research in, 20, in 1999 about the pedagogy, about teaching and learning. Don't expect that that will be published because that, that, they, that work is already out of date. No? Then duplications of previously published ones, depending on the level or the nature of the scientific inquiry. And of course, if there are incorrect or unacceptable conclusions are not publishable. So when your paper gets to that journal and you receive the first review, you should be very happy because not all comes that so easy, okay? So I started submitting, then it all started to be rejected. Again, I tried, I tried so many times, again rejected. And of course, I learned from the reviews of these authors, from these peer reviewers. And I learned from this, then the time I submitted again, it was accepted. So, walang mali, walang mali as we try and try. Okay? So, being published now means your paper is permanent in World Wide Web. Your materials are published permanently and accessible knowledge. It belongs to the body of knowledge, whether you are in the different continents of the country, as long as you are connected with the internet, your paper is published, then it will stay forever. Your paper is improved because a paper in Scopus or Web of Science will not be published unless it passes through the rigors of publication, the editors, reviewers, the sub-editors, and even the group readers. Your paper is actively promoted. It becomes available to a far greater audience. And of course, your writing is trustworthy. Material has been published, carries the quality assurance is stamped and telling to the world it's worthy of publication. Okay, next. So let's try to look at this one, the types of articles being published, okay? In other countries, this is the practice, no? Why they have so many publications. In one research or in, in one thesis or dissertation, like the country of Malaysia, in one thesis or in one dissertation, they can generate three publishable articles from this study. But let's try to look at first the types of articles being published. First, the synthesis articles. These are the review papers. This is actually the literature review of your research in the Germanic format or in the traditional format of your thesis, which we usually put chapter one as the introduction, chapter two as the review of related literature in studies. That literature review is being published we call this as a synthesis article or review article. And of course, the research articles are actually the results of your actual investigation, actual experimentation, or actual data gathering. And of course, case studies for qualitative researches. Okay, let's try to look at this thing. Of course, uh, for, for medicine, no, for uh, natural and environmental sciences, looking at clinical articles. Okay, for example, you have a research outputs, a thesis or a dissertation. 
you can actually come up with three publications out of it. First, the literature review article. Because imagine the time you poured in putting or in making the traditional chapter two of your research, you did a literature review article. In other countries, their practice is before a student can conduct a research, the student must be able to have published first a literature review articles. Why? They will not allow a student to conduct a study with narrow knowledge about the topic being explored. Because literature review articles will provide you two things. First, what has not been found in the field or in the gap, and what has been found in that field. So literature review article is a part of a publishable research. Okay, and of course, you can also publish the methodological articles of your research. No, the method you use can be publishable by doing a review articles of that methodology. So literature review and methodological review articles, these are journal art, uh, these are kinds of publication strategy wherein you actually synthesize 100 or 250 to 500 research articles about a specific method. Uh, about a specific problem of inquiry and publish that, format that into IMRAD. And that is also publishable. And of course, one or more articles on the study results, depending on the uh, robustness or depending on the number of your research variables in the study. Okay, so if you have, uh, you explored many variables and you use a multiple regression no uh, then with that regression variables that you used provided that they are they have their results in your paper then they can be publishable separately okay so how i wish that in one research we were able to generate three or four research articles coming from that specific output okay so I hope na kung mas mahaba pa siguro yung oras natin, then we will, I will try to walk you through the process of this. Okay? Next. Now, uh, journal articles like uh, Web of Science and Scopus on publishing two or more articles on the study results reminds us that we need to avoid salami slicing. So what is this salami slicing? Is a European sausage wherein it is being eaten into thin slices. So when we publish also, kasi nasabi ko sa inyo, yung results ng studio can be a separate publishable uh, variable. But see to it that that scientific data should not be sliced into that thin context, into that thin uh, portion. Because that has something to do also in in science, okay? So when authors break up a large study into two or more smaller published articles, they are creating slices of their work. Here I am referring to the results of your study now. Now what happens in salami slicing? When a single research is divided into slices and each of which is a least publishable unit. So if for example, you have five uh, statement of the problem, including your statement number one, which is actually your profile of the respondents, then you publish five research articles. Okay, so that is questionable in research publication. Okay, so see to it, it's accepted to have uh, a separate publication of the variables provided that they have or they can really provide a major contribution to knowledge, not that thin slice at a time. So there is the thing that according to author Gray, why the authors are doing this? Because they want to increase their publication count, they get more recognition, they, they achieve faster career progression, and they receive more funding, okay? So these are the practices that we need to avoid so that we will really establish a scientific reputation, okay? So see to it that when we publish, we can publish the literature review, we can publish the method, we can publish the results provided that these results will not be sliced into this thin sheet of knowledge.
okay? Team sheet of knowledge. Okay, now the question is when we talk of Web of Science and Scopus, what are the types of journals? We have that limited access journals. These limited access journals are usually the free journals. These are the questions, no? When we talk of limited access journals, these are the Web of Science, these are the Scopus Index journals that they do not have publication fee, but when all the when audience, no, when students, when teachers would like to access your research article, it's the one who will access will pay. So there's what you call a subscription fee. So it becomes a limited access journal. But for the author who publish, it is free. Okay, so we have many journals like these, no limited access journals, particularly these hardcore journals, impactful journals in Web of Science and Scopus. And we have also the open access journals, the journals that are collecting APC, APC stands for Article Processing Charge, and that will be free for the readers, for the audience to download anytime. So open access journals are journals that are collecting publication fees, but it's free when published, it's open for all. So it's up to you when to choose, what to choose, a limited access or an open access journal. But the thing here is when it's a limited access, the thing here is, Conti, they get a uh, lower citation because readers were not able to, to have access of the full article. But for open access journals, it's free. You get it. No? And you can read from abstract to references. And of course, this is what we are avoiding now, the predatory journals. These are the fly-by-night journals publishing research outputs without quality assurance or journals without uh, being indexed, not being indexed to Scopus or Web of Science. Okay, so that's why I, I put it re in red so that we need to avoid these predatory journals. Okay, now in, when you talk about Scopus and Web of Science, it does not mean that when you have, when you have publication in WAS or Web of Science or in Scopus, you are already that kind of a prestigious researcher or an author. Remember, not all journals in Web of Science and in Scopus are equal. First, let's look at the context of Web of Science. For Web of Science, for countries like America, you know, the United States of America, they have this list appeal to Scopus and they prefer Web of Science known as Clarivate Analytics, okay? Because when it's a web of science, as you can see there in the pyramid, it shows that those journals that are indexed in WAS or web of science are only few journals that are very, very much impactful. So Kokonti, followed by ESCI journals, no? followed by this next level, the Medline, the Biosis, the Inspect, the MySight. And of course, ang pinakamarami ay yung mga journals that are indexed only for open access and Google Scholar. But uh, mind you that there are also Web of Science journals that are both indexed in Web of Science and Scopus. Okay? On the other side, Scopus, is an indexing database wherein it is more appealing for Europeans, for Asians, sa atin. No? That's why sinasabi natin uh, in our evaluation tool, what is Copus publication? At least na maririnig mo yung sinasabi na Web of Science. Kasi para sa atin, even in... Uh, uh, in China, even in the Southeast Asian countries, they prefer Scopus. But remember, not all journals are equal. No? But when you go really 
to the thing that we need to publish in a high impact journal, let's prefer a journal that is both indexed in Web of Science and Scopus. Okay, so narinig natin, Scopus Elsevier. Elsevier is one of the publishing houses of Scopus. Because we have also Scopus Wiley, Scopus Taylor, Scopus Sage, Scopus Walters, Scopus Emerald, Scopus Inner Science. So I am also fortunate enough that I was able to have publication in Scopus Sage. And that Sage journal is both indexed in Scopus and Web of Science, and it belongs to Web of Science Social Citation Index. So kung hardcore researcher ka, hardcore scientist ka, you prefer these hardcore journals. But if you are starting your career to become a researcher, to become uh, an author who would like to publish, then you may start at the journals that uh, having their both index in Web of Science or Scopus, but not that much impactful. But it's still Scopus pa rin. Your name will be in the Scopus database. Okay? So now, when we publish, because our topic here is Trends and pathways, when we publish, we usually look at the article. We usually look at the format of your article. So this will be a walkthrough session for everyone. I will be citing uh, personal uh, research articles here, which become which uh, I'm expecting that this will be a basis for you to improve, to enhance, and of course, uh, put something that's, uh, that will make your paper worthy of acceptance by that publisher. Okay, so the key to successful scientific writing should start at the structure of the paper. And the basic structure of your paper is usually the IMRAD, the introduction, the methods, the results, and discussion where each of the major components of the articles addresses different aims. So I'd like to present to you the structural component of a publishable article, which I, we cited this in our research paper. So this, this is actually the IMRAD, introduction, the methods, the materials and methods, the results and discussion. If you are able to organize your research paper, your thesis or your dissertation this way in an IMRAD format with uh, 7,000 words, with all of that full article, no, then that can be already a signal that your paper can be submitted for publication, okay? Because we do not publish the old one, like in the thesis, like you have your chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. We, we, can, we, we do not publish that bulky one. We only publish the article version, which is IMRAD in its form, okay? So first is, let's try to look at the abstract of a paper. So this is an abstract, I hope. This will be a simple walkthrough session. Medyo bilisan natin kasi ang time natin is limited. So in abstract, you have this, you need to format your abstract this way. Put an introductory statement. Okay? Put an introductory statement, a short sentence, one sentence of that introductory statement, followed by the major objective of the study, as what you can see here, in order to prepare university students as proficient, proficient productive Technologist, no, that's actually the introductory statement, followed by the major objective. This is that examine that learning style preferences. Okay. Then to be followed by the method of that research. The study employed, descriptive correlational. Okay. The participants, the sampling data collection and analysis, followed by the major findings and the conclusion and recommendation. And of course, in abstract, you do not forget your keywords. So your keywords should not be less than two words. It should be five to six or five to six, five, five to seven words can do. So uh, and structuring your abstract is the first thing to do because it tells already the reviewer that your paper has something to contribute. But if you make an abstract that's really not uh, structured this way, then probably abstract palang rejected na siya. Okay? 
So hope we will be able to look at this context. Moving on. Now, the next part, the next part will be your introduction. I'm hoping that all of you here, 46 participants, 46 professors who are listening, that in structuring your introduction this way is important for the peer reviewer to consider. So it start it with a global perspective, global problem, moving to the continental problem, the regional problem, to that national problem, to your local issue or concern to which the study is anchored. Okay, so an example of this is an introduction it starts with progress in the 21st century is impossible without research. Usually, when we put a global context of a study, we are putting here in your introduction terms or citations coming from or references coming from uh, world organizations like World Health Organizations, like European Commission report, like that international UNESCO. Okay, so it's good to start with your introduction with this thing because they provide a basis that your research is really anchored on a global problem in a global perspective. Okay, then of course, structure it to the continental aspect in your continent or in Asia, is this a problem? So provide a simple citation and references from this. Okay, then the regional to that national and your local context should be able to explain what is happening already in your institution, what is happening in your school, in your local area, no? in your municipality, in your province. So if I try to review paper and I'll try to look, oh, where is the global problem in that paper? I cannot see the global problem. I cannot see the national problem. I cannot see the local issue there. It's just a matter of narrating about the variables of the study. So some, that could be a reason for a, a reviewer or a journal to reject your paper. Okay, so that's actually the new thing to consider. And the trending now is in research article publication, your literature review is not a separate part, but your literature review is already incorporated in your introduction. Okay, and that's the reason why the introduction should discuss the research gap of your study. And you can only get a research gap of your study when you get references coming from Scopus or Elsevier about the variables of the study, but remember to categorize the references from according to continent, according to countries. So, so that you will be able to identify what has not been found and what is to be found in your research and what your article would like to offer in order to fill that gap in that study. Okay, so that research gap in the study should be seen in that introduction. So when I review paper and I wasn't able to locate where is the research gap, what the study has something to offer as a contribution to new, to new knowledge, then I am sad. No, The tendency here is 50-50. I might recommend its acceptance or recommend for its rejection. Okay. And of course, provide also a paragraph wherein you will discuss the rationale of your study. So an article, the rational is actually the purpose or in a general purpose of that research. Okay, hoping that you can structure your research as I to do a review, structure your introduction based on national, continental, to that regional, to that local. Okay, and of course, I would like to infuse again that you can only get data of that local problem in your institution provided if you do a collaborative or participatory research. So that's why according to the data of this municipality, dapat maglagay ka rin para may local data kayo. No? According to the data of this provincial government, according to the data of the DSWD in this region, okay, according to the data of this university, because providing data already in your introduction is already a way of scientific process. 
Kasi kung naglalagay-lagay ka lang ng mga walang basis, alam na naman natin, we can categorize a chismis from a scientific or an educated statement. Okay? So, we are referring here to science, we are referring here to research publication, then all of these things should be scientific. Okay, moving on. So, this is actually the structure of your introduction. Medyo bilisan ko, no? Structural component, the introduction should present the context, national, yun na, nasabi ko kanina, the research gap of your study, and of course, the rational or the aim of the study. Okay, so there is this other suggestion coming from UPJSAM, which I get this slide, this, this, this exact slide. No? Uh, in your introduction, highlight the gap. Practical importance of the study is very important to be cited. And the research gap, the summary of available literature. Okay, so tanongin mo, how do I state the summary of available literature to fill the research gap of my study? You may start with a, with a statement like this. Previous study has addressed several aspects of blank, author year, author year as the relevant article, then cite again, author year, author year, then Cite again, author year, author year. And see to it that when you present your research gap, it should be three to five years. Okay? Three to five years. Moving on. Uh, let's skip this one. In other contexts, no, there are also articles that are presenting a thematic discussion of their introduction. So I myself is uh, have this kind of article published wherein I made a thematic thematic uh, discussion of the variables in the study. So, and of course, the framework of the study is somewhat uh, presented as part of the introduction. So, depende kasi yan kung ano yung saan ka mas mapabilis at mas easy yung sa tingin mo. So, in this paper which I published, I was able to present the framework of the study in a, in a separate uh, subsection of that introduction. So I was able to present the theories related to or to which the study is anchored, no? the diagrammatic framework of the study, how the author illustrates these theories in the context of her study, and the complete and detailed description of the diagrammatic framework of the study. So it's up to you, but I need also to see in your research paper what is the underpinning theory of that research. Because later on, in the later, latter part of your research, I would like also to see what is the theoretical implications of your research. Basabi natin kanina, the purpose of scientific publication is not only to publish, but it's a way to rebuttal, refute existing theories, or uh, concur existing theories. So in this study I have is, I use on the exploring the relationships and labels by students how classroom management styles in a Philippine higher education institution. I published this in European Journal of Educational Research and I use the general theory of Skinner model. I use choice theory of Glasser and of course, Bowlby theory. And there I, I created my own diagrammatic framework for that study because my study is focusing on the classroom management styles of the students and a mixed methods research wherein I assess the connectedness and anxiety of the students towards the classroom style of their teachers, whether when the teacher is democratic, auto authoritative, autocratic, or disappear. And of course, what are the labels? What are the meanings that the students generate from this teaching classroom manage management styles of these instructors? So I tried to make this study. So we found out that there's really a difference. So it becomes part of the policy that in the workload of the faculty members, uh, there should be an academic counseling by the teacher to the students. So it's a way now to establish a deeper and closer relationship between students and, of course, the teachers. So see to it that you will be able to provide the framework of your study this way. Moving on. So of course, so do not forget, as very important part of that research, IMRAD format is your purpose of the research. So, alam naman natin, it's actually your statement of the problem and you talk of your traditional thesis or your dissertation. So, whether it's 
in a declarative form or in an interrogative form. So when we talk of purposes, we are referring to an objective, then state the major goal and the specific objective. The example I have here is written as a purpose. So generally, the study aims to ascertain the level of literary appreciation skills of students with the end goal of proposing innovative learning tasks to enhance literary appreciation skills. Especially, specifically, it seeks to first identify the student's perceived level of literary appreciation skills determine the student's performance, ascertain difference, and test significant relationship. Okay, so I hope that this will be very clear in your article later on. Okay, next. We are moving now to M as the methodology of that research. So we hope that you'll be able to structure your research as, as follows. You specify the research design, the sampling procedure, the instruments, data collection, and data analysis framework. For example, when you use a descriptive qualitative research design or employed mixed methods, quanti quality methods of research, no, that will be a separate one. So as a subsection of that methodology, it's also good on my part, being a reviewer, to understand why did the author or why did the researcher use this method? So it's also good to put according to Presswell here, according to Fraenkel here. So yung mga may ganun na context, or especially when you use qualitative research. No? So according to Patton, so it's a good way for you to also do a review or method review of the methods you use. So similar with the context of literature review, you're doing a review of the method because you want to know how to execute a certain method. Because we cannot afford our students or ourselves to conduct a research that even familiar with that method. No? What are you using? I will be using Solomon for a square research design, sir. But what is Solomon? No? What is that assumption of this research design? So there will be things here to consider. Okay, see to it that to become scientific in our nature, scientific in our research, we as researchers must be conversant and familiar with the research design we are using into that specific research. Okay, next. Of course, it's good to go back to your participants, no? discuss your participants' profile characteristics. Doon mo na i-discuss sa profile characteristics ng participants mo sa participant subsection. Nang sa ganon, if I, were the, if I will be the reviewer, then I will be able to see that, oh, see, the participants have these kinds of characteristics. Ma, uh, many of them is female. No? Many of them are female. Uh, most of them no? are male. So, depende yan. How we will be able to package this context? But of course, it's also here in the sampling procedure and participants, you will put your research ethics protocol. So what are the ethics protocol you establish so that you, you were able to gather this kind of study? So in the form of informed consent, very important, yeah, no? even in that, uh, uh, in your instrument, Alam naman natin, no? we have the Data Privacy Act that million ang bayad kung may nagreklamo dyan. Okay? So next is, of course, discuss already the instrumentation of your research. It's also good that you need to include the description of that research instrument you used. No? It's a structure the content validity or the ones who validated that research instrument when it's structured. And of course, it's reliability indices. Okay, then uh, in your research method, you, will be, you can also present the, the data analysis framework of your research, present your ethical consideration and other concerns here. Kaya nga, the thing here is, it's actually a research method. Okay? We are, we learned that when you talk of science, we are referring to scientific method. And we teachers, we professors, we students, 
do not afford no do not afford to come up with the research with flaws in our methodology okay now i at uh, the time i attended a training of this one no hosted by the university of the philippines through their journal jesam no is corpus and web of science index journal of the of this college of uh, environmental science in up lb then we asked the editor in chief and we asked when do we say that a method or a material in a research article is good and according to him when it is replicable and scientifically sound so when you repeat the method particularly kung experimental yung research mo particularly kung medical research yung research mo no and you repeat the method sakto yung method na sinasabi ng paper sakto yung pang repeat mo it might yield uh, a similar result then with that result that result uh, that method is replicable then it's a very good research method okay so follow format it's also good that you cite sources of common methods in your research method design describe in more details the uncommon methods you use no like the conjoint analysis and so on and so forth and other new methods being used now and you need to cite some specs even for that common methods even you use correlational even you use this very common method in research it's also good to cite this uh to provide references or citations no because there will be there will always be a new thing in that uh, method okay and of course a way to describe is you describe the target population of your study okay the an basic unit of analysis and of course the data analysis or even the procedure so naka specify lahat sa method okay so this is actually now what is new now in sampling because i the new the, the trend now is that many of you or many of us are still using that slovens in sampling but uh up students or up up authors uh have something to say with the use of slovens that's why the trend today is you can use an online sampling tool and i'd like to present to you an online sampling tool called browsoft so a sample sample size calculator wherein you can already set the margin of error uh, in that number of respondents the confidence level the population size and of course the response of that distribution so it becomes also good that we are using now these things and the more likely that the paper is being accepted for publication when you are using these uh, new things new new tools in your research paper so it also becomes appealing for the reviewers to understand that the paper wow this is something new for us to read so the sampling calculator is good so it's an online sampling calculator so you better use this one you can use this one i'm not saying that slovin is not acceptable but there are limitations okay and if you would like to have a play safe status no you can use that browser provided that you know the number of your respondents and you have already the actual number of your population for your study then gamitin mo na siya okay and another thing is the new thing that is also appealing for research journals nowadays is that the use of g power especially when we are trying to test the differences of these categorical variables no the anova no they are using this g power and this g power is a free software you can download this one no because it calculates the the statistical power especially when you are doing an interventional study so you will be able to know the effect size of a certain uh intervention so you can also uh put this as a new spice in your research provided that you use this one okay provided that you use this one 
Okay? So, moving on to results and discussion, we hope that you'll be able to structure this one. It's just a reminder now that uh, please structure your research as follows, introduction to the section like this, no? Uh, the title of the section, Students' Level of Literary Appreciation Skills. The section must have sub-levels. In each sub-level, present the data in tabular or graphical format using APA, sixth edition. Now we have the seventh edition. And this is what I would like to emphasize that your discussion per team should highlight like this. Okay, the trend in the data, inference, insights, and implications of the findings to practice policies or theories, and of course, the literature citation. Okay, I get this uh, information from the, P, uh, the Normal Lights, a public, an official publication of the Philippine Normal University, because I, I I have a publication publication in that journal. It's actually is an Asian Citation Index journal, and they provided with this kind of uh, information. So, and this is what I'm sharing you now. So, trends in data, inferences, and literature citation. So, for example, this is the table one. Then probably present the trends. Table one presents the literary appreciation. This includes the mean, presentation of the mean. And of course, inferences. This is just imply that the participants have a fear or moderate level of exhibiting this literary appreciation skills. Then literature citation. The finding agrees with Abu Sapi that majority of the students lack confidence in displaying literary appreciation skills. So just follow the sequence and your paper will be accepted for publication. All right, so this will be the structure of the research and research results discussion, okay? So in other journals, they are separating the results from discussion. Depende yan kasi sa journal. Okay, but uh, what is common to me is the results and discussion are married. Okay. Okay, next. Is very close support, guidance, or sufficient minimum judgment. Do we have questions here? Hello, I, I, I am... Uh, I can hear someone or somebody who is uh, speaking. You can interrupt me this time so that you can raise your question as we go through the process, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Okay, let's proceed to conclusion before I will walk you through the trends and pathways. No, because we cannot publish our paper if our research paper are not really organized this way. That's why I presented this as the basic component of your research uh, publication. So please structure the conclusion as follows. You already knew about this one. There's conclusion. The first paragraph restate the main objective of the study and the importance of the findings in filling in important gaps in literature. And the second and fourth paragraph, please provide the summary of findings and discuss the practical theoretical implications and insights of the study and concluding statement. So this is an example. And journals do not like long conclusion. It should always be short, okay? Then of course, in your recommendation, nandoon na rin dapat sa article ninyo yung recommendation at implications niya. So the major weakness and limitation of the study may be provided in that recommendation section and future research direction. So example of this is this article. The university should provide in-service training. So these are actually the practical suggestions for that specific paper so that there will be adoption of that university, of that institution. And in that part of the recommendation, we presented there that the suggestion as to the limitation. So let me read it. As to the limitation of the current study, it only fills the gap in literature regarding the classroom management styles is student connectedness and anxiety, as well as the labels attached to the different classroom management styles using quantity quality research designs in a limited setting. So why I'm looking at this? Because uh, peer reviewers are interested to know what you as a personal author can recommend for future research regarding your present study. So, kung nakita ko na rin ito sa article, oh, wow, this is a very good article. I was able to see what, what are the weaknesses and what are the strengths of the paper. It's good when we publish, ito kasi yung thing dyan. When we publish, we do not own the knowledge. No? So, it's 
also good for us as researcher to expose already the weakness of our research publication. So that this will be a basis for somebody to come up with a further study, to cite your paper. Okay? So this is a thing that needs to be considered. Okay? Hence, it is recommended that similar study may be conducted with larger samples, no? inclusion of more variables, and use of more sophisticated approaches in research. So kung ako yung reviewer, basahin ko na yan. Wow, the author is very humble. No? So, ina-accept mo na may pagkukulang ang yung research kasi wala naman talagang perfect na research, no? Accept, you just accept it as this are this might be the limitations of my research. So, if I were the reviewer then I was able to see these kinds of uh, implications in your research, then you've got a point for me. You've got a point from me, I should say. All right? So another thing is your references, and this is the something that is the weakness of all, most of our researchers when they want to publish. No, I want to see, uh, even in even to my listening students here, no, there should always be one-to-one -one correspondence, one-to-one -one correspondence of your references to your in-text citation. So if you cited eleven authors in the paper. You need also to put that 11 references. So you follow whether the sixth APA format or the seventh APA format and merge all them alphabetically. Okay? So, at ang panghuli is for your paper to become appealing also for the researcher, is you may also use sexy titles. No? So because the title informs the reader, the peer reviewer about the content of the article, it should be simple, direct, brief, attractive. No, uh, It does not contain abbreviations or jargons, does not contain numerical values, and it's like the tenor of the paper. I'd like to show you this uh, portion. No, Example of a catchy or sexy titles of research according to Alikai. Dr. Alikai is a professor of Cagayan State University who has published this book. So the first part will be the sexy part, which is actual, the short is toppy, easy to say. And the second part is the technical part, which is serious and informative. So I'd like to show you one example. Bato Bato Fish, a review of the Philippine freshwater fish assemblages in relation to tectonics and their implication to paleobiogeography. So this is from the University of the Philippines. Actually, I just got the title. No, I do not know the content, just the title, for example, in this session. Anak, gigibig pa ako, narrative case analysis of motherhood and maternal practices of three prostituted women. So from Danielle of UP. Then, girl, bo girl by baklatong boy, intersectionality of sexuality, gender, class, and urban poor context. So, Sepriano et al. So you may be able to come up with a interesting title. Kasi in my experience is, I was able to identify, to put a better title of my research upon knowing the findings of my study, upon forming the conclusion of my study, that, aha, this will be the title for my study so that it will become interesting and appealing. Okay? So, but other researchers will really start with that specific title. They, they will really stick with their technical title. So if you are someone who is artistic in nature, no, we use sexy title as part of your publication. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through on the trend in research publication now. So the trending is the review of related literature is in the introduction section. Be able to present the gaps. Another thing is establish author intimacy requirement. If you found someone who is similar, who is an expert of that field and you have interest with that, topic, you may also download the paper and chat that person or email that person. Kasi lahat naman ng published articles na doon yung email ng author. Okay? And the use of technology tools as aids in ensuring publishable research articles and co-authorship across different countries is also encouraged. That is establishing our internationality as an author. And of course, impact what is our author's impact okay 
So let's skip this one. Okay. So when we publish, I am exposing it. No, uh, I was uh, selected as a reviewer of the International Journal of Instruction, and I was given this article evaluation form. So to be selected as a reviewer, you need to be given the information that you are selected, what are the parameters of evaluation, what are the what is all about the paper and the full paper itself. So kung reviewer ka kasi you, you do not expose the title of that research you reviewed. But you can tell that you are a reviewer. Okay? So this International Journal of Instruction is actually a Scopus Q1 newly indexed just this year. And these are what I am sharing to you. It's evaluation form. So do you think that your title is appropriate? Okay, next. Does the abstract summarize clearly and effectively? Or does the abstract summarize the article clearly and effectively? Yes, partially, no. No. Are the objectives set clearly in your paper? Is the issue stated clearly? Is the literature review adequate to support the gap? Is the design of the research appropriate? Will, uh, is it exemplary? Is the methodology consistent with the practice? Are the findings expressed clearly? Is the presentation of the findings adequate and consistent? Are the tables, if any, arranged well? Are the conclusions and generalizations based on findings? Are the suggestions meanings valid and based on findings? Are the references adequate? And is the language clear and understandable? So, paramihan ng yes, if you have more yeses, the higher chances of being accepted. If more no's, then definitely uh, return to the sender with red lipsticks. Because when they also return your paper and not properly edited and everything, when uh, uh, the initial thing there is, you send the paper, in a few weeks or in, in one month, they will send it back, you will receive the notice to revise or notice of rejection. They will also include the copy of that copy of that article run, uh, being run to plagiarism scan. So my first attempt was this. I submitted. The next one, I received the, the first notice. It's rejected. And here are here is the result of your plug scan. Aba, it reaches 45% similarity index. Okay, and of course, uh, the result of the evaluation. So from these results of the evaluation, I tried again to fix the paper. Okay, so there's no wrong of trying. Just be persistent. Okay, so now remember that a publishable paper must be original, innovative, developmental, and mechanistic. Where it is technically sound, methodology or experiment. Clear presentation, it value value to science, its implication to science, and the return of investment to society. Lalo na kung pandet yung research natin, no? Parang binigyan tayo ng gobyerno ng piso, dapat nag-invest sa atin, ibabalik natin pag sa gobyerno dos na yon. So it's a matter of investment. Okay, when we go back to publication, editorial supply chain, you submit. It passed through the editor, publisher, production. When it's accepted production, then, of course, to the Google, then to the well, World Wide Web, then the, the users. Okay? So your responsibility as an author is your work is original, including its write-up. It's your contribution to your field. Okay? And submit article to one journal or publisher at one time. No, we do not do uh, submit. We do not submit one article to many journals because the journal already invested to your paper, and do not submit already published and other types of publication like proceedings. Okay, so this is actually the publication process. Okay, next let's proceed to the 
characteristics of a good reference. We already said that a paper is likely to be accepted when it has filled the research gap and you have adequate references. Now, the important characteristics of a good reference is seen through the way how, what are the papers you are citing in your paper. So are you citing online references or are you citing print references? When we talk of journal publication, I'm encouraging you that your references uh, must be online. Mas marami dapat ang online references than that print. Okay? And it's also good to consider that when you get references, you need also to look at the impact of the authors you are citing. So I am showing to you a software known as harzing.com. And this harzing.com is downloadable, it's free, and a way to track the impact of the author, the quality of the author. If the author has citations, if the, how many publications does this author already have is actually seen in harzing.com. So you may download this one. And the articles that are likely being cited are review articles, methodology articles, and research articles. Okay? So download this one. Medyo limited kasi ang time natin. So it's very good that a literature review is really a significant part of your research because it improves your understanding. Your expertise in the field. You know what is new in your field. You know what is not new in your variables. You are knowledgeable about the topic. And it updates you on the state of the art. What is new to what it what is not new okay strategies for doing literature review i hope you already knew this one use your google scholar analyze rapidly all publications you found use keywords and make a literature review matrix and of course when we start to look at the gaps in the literature as part of your introduction you need to put your literature review matrix you need to uh, draw first your literature review matrix so that you know what is really the gap. For example, no, your, your LRM presents the main point of that analysis. It summarizes the article you read in several points and it presented in tabular form. We have the how many number of articles, say 20 articles for that specific variable, the references, the titles, what are the study parameters of the variables, the focus of the objectives, what is the gap in that article and what is the finding? So a good way for you to establish also your rationale as well as the research gap in your paper. All right. So the thing here is download or related articles from high impact journals only. So Scopus or Elsevier, no Web of Science, and try if you have the means, then print all these references, arrange the articles chronologically. Arrange it according to the advancement. Arrange it according to geography. Or arrange it according to research questions. Okay? And we try to that you can put annotation in each bibliography that you would like to do. Okay? That's why when a student would like to do a research and the student comes to you, what should be the initial thing to say so that the paper will, will be coming up with a publishable output later on? Ah, you are doing a research on teaching styles. Then go to Google Scholar and consult Google Scholar what has been the studies published about teaching styles. Okay, so it's a way to understand that these students are doing a scientific process. Even there are students who are all, uh, already doing investigatory projects, let us encourage them to get really references from Web of Science and Scopus. No? As young as they were, as young as they are, they are already exposed to these kinds of material. How much more when they will uh, grow more, grow up, and it will become part of their system. Okay. Now for technology-based quality assurance tools for journal publication, uh, we have free online tools wherein you can use. We have plagiarism scanner. We have your grammar checker, readability test tool, and your citation generator. So plug scan, if your university has what we call a subscription to turn it in, then you are very lucky. Sino po ba dito yung mga universities na meron ng turn it in? May I know po? 
Can you comment sa chat box kung may mga turn it in na po ang universities ninyo? Okay, so St. Louis University, thank you very much. No? Universities have their subscription to turn it in. So it's it's uh, easier for us to uh, have a publication, a published paper now because at our level, we already checked the similarity index of our paper. Okay, so we have ESSU, Gigian Campus, Bisu, Candijay Campus. Wow, oh, congratulations po sa inyong administrator at sa mga research managers po ninyo. No? Cavite State University, Ma'am Alfi, congratulations po. So another quality assurance is Grammarly. So be sure that you also run your paper to Grammarly and not all... Uh, Context, no. After running it to Grammarly, perhaps you can also request your English critic or English teacher to have a reading of your paper, so that uh, that artificial intelligence that Grammarly you use will also complemented by human intelligence. Then that will actually define later the quality of our paper. Okay. So there are also software wherein you can run your paper so that they will be able to identify its readability level. Okay, remember that when we publish, we try to tell to the world that this is the result of your study and the readability level should be standard. No, not really very difficult or not that very easy. Okay, so you can find free software here in the internet. Moving on, another is also a readability test tool. Of course, you have uh, some of you are using Mendeley, some of you are using Citation Generator, and other forms of citation tool. Because when you use uh, this Citation Generator, you, know, you will be able to cite exactly what's already in the online reference, other rather than writing it by yourself. No, sa dadabi dami later on ng nagawa ng kamay niyo at pinasok pasok ng kamay niyo. Uh, pasmado na yan. So, nawala na yung, pin, yung kama, yung period doon sa reference. So, it's also good to complement our human intelligence with artificial intelligence. Okay? So, let me tell to you that the reasons of paper rejection, when the paper fails is screening in the journal, figure table references are not complete, that could be the reason. Of course, this is common to us when the paper is not within the scope of the journal, it is rejected. Defective procedure, conclusion, conclusion is not based on the paper, incomprehensible, lack of novelty, or no significant contribution are not accepted or simply rejected. Okay, for Google Scholar, I'd like you to walk you through this one, though I hope somebody of you already knew this. You go to Google Scholar, and the first thing you need to do is search for a review article about your topic. And that's actually the basic thing for you to do so that you could come up with a publishable output. So review articles, as what I have said, are synthesizing 250 or more papers about a topic. So if you would like to do a study on teaching styles, then type teaching styles review articles. Fisheries review articles. If you are with uh, fisheries, okay, and your Google Scholar will show you 1 million, 10,000 results. Okay, then climate change reviews. Your paper must have review articles so that it will have, it will bear equality. Okay, so climate change review. So we have this example. Then now, as you go through the process of knowing the continental perspective of your research, you can put climate change Europe, climate change Asia, climate change India, or climate change Antarctica. Okay, so a way to establish internationality of your paper. Like climate change has been found to be a, a, the reason of climate change has been found as man-made or, yeah, man-made. So put European author here, Asian author here. Okay, it's good to put that context. 
uh, American author year, meaning to say, you as a researcher was able to weave all these concepts together, showing that this is actually the scenario of your problem of inquiry. Okay, uh, there are debates because uh, there are also papers that are using old art, uh, old references. Is it really bad to use old references if you complement it with new references and they yield the same findings? Okay, for example, just as example, a statement like this: the use of traditional teaching method in the classroom uh, is no longer effective. Uh, in this kind of, in teaching this subject. So author 1999, author 2001, author 2002, author 2005, author 2010, author 2011, author 2021. So putting that context, that means to say that statement has been found since 1999 and it is complemented with several researches up to this thing. So scientific is still in nature. Okay. So do not also forget to use your Philippine e-journal to trace the problem in your country. So go to philippeej.com, then search for that specific problem. Okay. So your Philippine e-journal is a way for you to look what are the studies that has been conducted by universities in the Philippines about the problem of inquiry, okay? And what is good with this Philippine e-journal, you can easily get the references. So for example, Philippine e-journal type technology, there are 13 journals talking about technology, 616 articles and 497 authors, okay? And as you click on the article, these are the articles about technology, okay? Then moving on, and you would like to cite a certain reference, then click on the tools. Then as you click on the tools, citation generator will appear. Then you can generate whether it's APA, MLA, or Turabian. So let's say APA, then this is actually the citation. Just copy this one to your word. So there will be no problems in writing your reference. Okay. So another is your, the use of semantic scholar because it's also a very powerful database wherein you can get online references from Google, uh, from Web of Science or from Scopus. So we can ex you can explore this later on, the use of Semantic Scholar. Okay, then you can go to Sage Journals if you would like to get references here. Taylor and Francis, okay, just, and of course in Elsevier, go to elsevier.com, UCLA library, if you would like to get references from United States or around the world about reading comprehension, about reading habits, okay, and if you are related to, if your field is on economics and you would like to present the scenario of what is happening now to the monetary status of countries, then you can go to Asian Development Bank. Okay, Biomedical Central, if you would like to understand what is new now about COVID-19 researches. It's good that Scopus is, and Web of Science are already providing free subscription to all journals, to all articles, publishing about COVID-19. So it makes available for the public, for everyone to read about these findings. Okay, then the Directory of Open Access Journals, a very good uh, database, just go to doaj.org. Then you can click on journal aspect here or article, then put the field, the topic you would like to search, then everything will appear, okay? So Bureau, the National Bureau of Economic Research, the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, P PNAS, no? the SSRN or the Social Science 
Research Network. Okay? The Philippine Journal. Okay? And of course, having established later on the quality of your paper, putting this into IMRAT, we will now try to submit your paper. And the question here is, sir, what journal will I submit my paper? Of course, sa atin, we always tell, I need to submit my paper to a journal that is not uh, collecting article processing charts or a journal that has APC, but uh, it will be readable or it will be accessible by all. So I will, let's try to look first at the hardcore journals, okay? Why we prioritize journals that are hardcore, journals that are having high impact? Because this really counts much for our uh, knowledge generation points uh, sa Global Innovation Index. Okay? So, for example, the Wiley Journal Finder Beta. Wiley is actually a Scopus and Web of Science. May I request assistance from the our technical person here? Meron ba tayong technical person? Kasi itong laptop ko, I transferred to Juan, kaya hindi ko masyadong nagagamay yung Juan niya. Do we have, may, may I request a technical assistant from the group, from the organizer, please? Meron po ba? Okay. Sige. Sige, ganito na lang. So, the thing here is, you go to www.wiley journal finder beta. So, find match article journals and you click the ma you click on the manuscript title and put the manuscript abstract. Provided that you are done with your abstract, then you, you, you click on search journals and this database will provide you journals for your paper that has uh, a scope or that is really related to your research, to your paper. So doon ka na mag-explore later on. Mamaya mag-sample tayo. Mamaya na lang po. The other one is when you go to Manuscript Matcher, this is actually an example for master journalists of the web of science. So put the title of your research, then put the 200, ab 200 words abstract, then click find journals. Then this database will provide you already the appropriate journals where you can submit your papers, your output. Okay. And what is good with these databases is that you can already filter. For example, uh, you can click on the filter side and find out, I would like to publish your paper quarterly, monthly, no? uh, semi-annually or annually. So you choose on the filter and it will uh, appear these journals only that are publishing quarterly, semi-annually or annually that are really indexed in web of science similarly with springer nature we have we call this they call this as journal suggester just click, put on the title and put here the manuscript text then it will give you journals wherein you can submit your paper and of course we have also journal finder for elsevier aside from that clarivate analytics so put the title and put the abstract and eventually you will be able to get the appropriate journal of your paper. Okay, and even in Taylor and Francis. Okay, we have a journal suggester. Okay, so as we end this one, I am done with this uh, section. And I hope that this topic can somehow improve or contribute to your publication. And that's what we are expecting today. Okay? 
So example, let me try to walk you through the journal finder. Para mag, may, we have example for this. All you have to do is click on the journal finder. Okay, I am sharing now my Okay. Hope you can see this. Okay. Example is you go to journal finder springer and a springer journal suggester will appear like this and suppose that we would like to uh, look for a specific journal about uh, literature learning Okay, kuha na lang tayo ng example na article dito. Okay. Okay, I, we have here, no? ililipat natin. So, for example, this will be the title of your research, Study Habits of Students and Learning Styles. Copy this to Springer. Copy the title. Then, copy for uh, the abstract as a whole. Nakikita po ba? Then, paste this one to the manuscript text. Then, as you paste this one, you click on what subject area? So, is it in computer science? Is it in, in earth science, economics? So, I put here education. So, I put here education. Then, I, I refine your recommendations here. So we have the recommendations for you to have easier publication. For example, the minimum impact factor, okay? Minimum acceptance rate, it's up to you to decide. Maximum uh, time to first decision, indexing services, okay? So it's up to you if you will choose open access journals or subscription journals. So let's try to use open access. Then click on suggest journals. Okay, ang naging problema, sabi niya, we are current, okay, here are the journals wherein you can, you can select for publication. So it already generates, uh, generated articles for you to work on. So the title of our research is Learning Styles of Applied Science Courses. The keyword here is Applied Science Courses. Then it appears the following research journals under this one. So International Journal of STEM Education. The impact factor is very high, 5.02, and the first day decision is 35 days. Then acceptance rate is 18%. So, mapapawaw ka kasi masyadong mataas. No? Baka may hindi papasok yung paper mo, but it's, it's good that you are being provided with these kinds of tool or artificial intelligence for you to guide what specific journal will you submit. No? Research and practice and technology enhanced learning. 56 days only in the first decision, but the acceptance rate is 16. Okay, so it's up to you to choose. And suppose that your research is, you would like to submit this one to this research and practice technology enhanced journal learning, then click on that uh, title and it will provide you where the journal is located. Okay, so I click there in the journal suggester and here it comes and submit your manuscript. So 
Suppose that I would like to submit my manuscript. I click submit your manuscript. Pero basahin mo muna kung ano yung mga scope and aims niya. Okay? So I click on the manuscript and this is what appears. So it appears that I need to register for this journal. So you put your username and your password. Because these journals are really uh, very reputable. No? So therefore, uh, at least uh, you will be able to be oriented that you need to create your account for this specific journal. So once you created your account or your ORC number or your ORC ID, then it's easier for you now to submit manuscripts for publication. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, I am now ready for your questions. I am done with my part. Hoping I contributed something today. Okay. Thank you, sir, for that meaningful and a uh, very another uh, wait lang okay sorry okay at this time we are now encourage everyone if there are some questions you might need to raise please you can write it on our chat box or in slido.com but but before that, sir, while we are preparing for questions, I have read some questions earlier from yes. Mr. Akma or Sir Sturdy Unatin. Good afternoon, sir. Can we ask, uh, sir, there are websites that accepting research papers for publication na may payment for like 2000 to 25 Is this legit po ba? Okay. Uh, as to the payment, I do not know if there are, there are journals that are free. Wherein I and I can guarantee you, but most of these free journals uh, took long time to review your paper because they got bulky of submission. But as to the journals, like two thousand to two thousand five hundred pesos, I am not certain. I am not. Uh, I have no idea. But most the, the average payment now for journal article is ten to fifteen thousand. When in, in Philippine peso, in Philippine peso, so it's actually uh, one hundred fifty dollars to three hundred dollars, depending on the on the impact, depending on the policy of the journal. So if the deciding factor for you to submit or publish a paper is the APC, you need to go first to the website of the journal and find out its article processing charge. But I'm encouraging you, try also those journals that are free. Though it, it will take long time for you to wait, but you've got no, no money to spend, only the effort to submit and only the effort to revise. Like what I did in my paper in Sage Open, actually Sage Open is both Web of Science and Scopus. I did not pay anything to publish my paper. And it's actually... Uh, getting citations now from different authors around the world. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, can I ask if there are some free sites that caters um, a paper or any Imrad format of your thesis or research, sir, that is a Scopus Index Journal? Or okay. there's none? Okay. Please. Mayroon po ba, sir, na mga journal sites po, sir, na free? Nam index din po siya or ISI index or any po Scopus index po rather. Yes. Oh, yes. We have many journals that are free. Like I, what I have said, Sage Open is free. Uh, pero it will take really time for you to wait the test of your patience and your character. Uh, maraming mga free, uh, particularly those journals that are Web of Science. They are free. Ah. Free talaga. Walang bayad talaga. Pero the time there, the time. Eh, paano kung gagamitin mo ito for promotion later? Paano kung gamitin mo sa kwan? Pero it doesn't matter. No, sabi nga nila, it doesn't matter whether the cat is black or white. What is important, it can catch mice. Yes, so, correct. Correct, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Some more questions? Dear participants? So, sir, can I ask also another question, sir? I have done my 
thesis last 2019, but sad to say I have not yet published it, sir. Uh, would it still be considered by other journal sites, sir, that my paper has already conducted 2018 but is not yet published at this yes. moment of 2021? Actually, or uh, are there requirements of the year? Are there are there limit are, are there limitations in the year or requirements for the years? Your requirements. Actually, uh, journals depending on the on the on the method of your research. Kung historical talagang matagal yung kanya. But in your context, since you finished in 2018, it's still relevant as long as you put this into IMRED format. And there will be updates now on your citations, like uh, from 2018, then put also similar studies now in 2019, 2021. It's still relevant. It's still relevant. So it's up to you to update the literature and tailor fit, tailor fit your paper based on the IMRED requirements. Still, uh, eh, para hindi mapabilang yung paper mo as a file drawer problem. Mm-hmm. No? Do it. We are looking at all, to all dissertations and theses of our students, undergraduate students, graduate students, that they should be publishable. Okay? They should be published. Sir, a question from Ma'am Shem Labayo, Labajo of its Cup, Maine. Sir, how could we identify predatory journals from school posts in ISI journals? Okay. Uh, can we have a little tour here? Konting-konti lang para ako, nakalimutan ko kasing sabihin para may pabaon. So, kasi very relevant yung question ni ma'am. All you need to do when you would like to identify if the journal is a scopus or not is go to, the first thing is, let, you, will, you need to go to www.clarivateanalytics. Okay? So, www.clarivate Okay, saglit lang para kwan. Mai nakalimutan ko kayong winok tru doon. Ah, uh, uni uh, hindi na nagre-respond yung aking kwan. You need to go to www.clarivate analytics for uh, Thomson Reuters and www.scopus.com naman kung scopus. So ipapakita niya yung mga journals doon. Makikita mo. In fact, you can even search doon sa search engine niya yung mga journals na index sa kanila. And definitely, uh, kung wala yung journal na, na hinahanap mo doon sa Scopus at wala sa Clarivate Analytics, perhaps it is predatory. So do not publish there. Huwag ka nang mag-publish doon kapag hindi mo nakikita yung pangalan ng journal doon sa mga databases na ito. Okay? So for example, we have this. Sana mag, uh, mag-respond ito. Okay, sir. We will wait, sir. Sige. Uh, I can provide you na lang other, uh, the slides so that... Uh, ayan, meron na. Okay? So, for the benefit of everyone, you can you can, uh, you can can find where, where is Scopus when you go to scopus.com and click on the... Here. Click on the Scopus preview. Click on the author search or author search or journal uh, listing. So, nandyan, pinapakita niya na you have your subject area. Okay, Double. nandito. For, for example, you would like to find uh, Sage Open. I click on the title of the journal and find and click on Sage Open. Okay. So, for example, uh, ito, Sage Open, kasi marami rin kasi So kung nakikita mo yung pangalan ng journal Sage Open nandoon, a uh, index na siya. And what is important is you click on that level Sage Open Medical Journal Report for example and read the Scopus coverage years and you can see now that you have it's still present the index. Now, there are debates now that uh one because Scopus is removing journals already. So Uh, they are re- removing journals in their databases because of many reasons kasi every year naman ang mga Scopus win na ito at mga mga ISI are doing evaluation of these journals so when something is suspicious something is when they evaluate then they stop the indexing 
for uh, for the benefit of evaluation the, evaluating the journal until such time that they will complete the evaluation and they have the findings then ibabalik ulit nila so there are journals marami rin na po yung mga uh, nangyari na ganun okay okay thank you so much sir some more questions po again we can use also slido.com or even type your questions here in the chat box. Okay. Marami, uh, ano pa pong katanungan natin? Uh, I will provide you my slides. I will share to you my slides, even the link of Scopus and Web of Science where you can get uh, the information. Okay. So it seems po, there's no questions already. So that concludes the talk of Mr. Gilbert Magolo this afternoon. And sir, allow me again to read the Certificate of Recognition. PISA I-21 awards the Certificate of Recognition to Gilbert C. Magolo, Jr. PhD, for imparting his invaluable time, resources, and expertise as research speaker on the topic Trends, Pathways, and Strategies in Research Journal article publication in the Web of Science and Scopus Journals. During the conduct of National War Con for the 21st Century Researchers and Educators with the theme, Digitalization in Research and Education, Leveraging the Emerging Trends in Data Management. According to this 25th day of September 2021, via Zoom video conferencing, live stream on POMI YouTube channel, and PICE21 Facebook page, signed, Ricky A. Kibinko, MATM LPT Virtual Conference Director, and Emmy Jan P. Indonila Palmani, MED LPT National President of PISE I 21. Thank you very much. Once again, sir, thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful topic this afternoon. And may I request everyone that the evaluation link or are now open. <coughs> Just be guided on the evaluation slip posted on the screen. We received good feedback so far, sir. Thank you so much, sir. God bless everyone from Dayanara, Besa, and thanks. God bless you, po, sir, from Maravik Santos. And thank you so much, sir, for giving me a wonderful instruction so that I can publish my thesis during my master's degree. I look forward to that, sir. Thank you, sir. So while we are waiting for the evaluations link to be open, can I ask everyone to please open your camera for a short photo op? Again, can I request everyone to open our camera? And never forget to smile. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So we have two panels in our room. Just keep smiling. So panel one, so ready? One, two, three, and smile. Okay, panel two, one, two, three, and Fine. Okay, so thank you, ma'am, sirs. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank Stay you, safe. po. Okay, po. Ma'am, and sir, don't forget, po, tomorrow, our event, uh, last topic will be the qualitative and mixed method analysis using NVivo Volume 2 Plus software to be discussed by Mr. Nicamil K. Sanchez. Noted, sir. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Magod, once again, sir. Thank you so thank you. Thank you so much. And please kindly wait for our evaluations link. I now open. It's now open for.
Yes po, Ma'am Charlene. Thank you so much po. So, yes, we will send po yung presentation po ng mga researchers, refer, ng, ta, ng mga guest speakers po natin through your email po. We will email po sa inyo. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir.